What happens when you get into debt? Wait, wait, wait. wait it's what? fine. What? Come on. And you can't... I'm going to struggle to pay this. ..or won't pay it back. It doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. No, 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 no. Evil! You have to stand to hell! Well, I'll smash the window, then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors... Hello? ..in dramatic situations. You want to stand here like a big man? Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Push me about. We meet the people who are losing their homes. I don't know where I'm going to stay for the night. It's a major eviction. <laughs> and their possessions. The desk should go in. <laughs> Everything. Okay. Because whatever happens... High Court enforcement! If you can't pay, they'll take it away. The pressures faced by tenants trying to find somewhere affordable to live has led to a rise in illicit subletting. A survey of letting agents has found 3.3 million people in the UK are living in illegally sublet rooms. Paul Bowhill and Phil Short are High Court enforcement agents. They work all over England and Wales, seizing property and collecting debt. Today, they're heading to East London to carry out an eviction. Is it a woman's name on there? Or Mr? Yes. Miss? The tenant owes £15,000 in rent arrears. But Paul and Phil are not collecting the debt. They're here to evict the tenant. It's uh, just a straightforward repossession, just a simple in out, really. Yeah. We'll park here. But it's going to be far from a routine eviction. I'm Paul Bowhill, and this is Phil. That's okay. Uh, you're the landlord, are you? Oh, I'm representing the landlord. Okay. The letting agent guaranteed the rent and was responsible for paying it directly to the landlord. But this plan backfired when the tenants failed to pay him, and he's now £15,000 out of pocket. Just a bit of advice, I mean, these guys are dangerous. Really? Just, just for oh. Relations between the letting agent and the tenant have gone sour, but dangerous behaviour is news to Paul. You want to call the police just in case? Okay. No. Paul decides to carry on without police backup. If you just hold back there, say. When we go to a repossession, the only information that we have from the writ is the name of the tenant and the landlord and the address to actually serve the writ. So we have no background information and we don't need it. Our instruction is purely to repossess the property. Hello, I'm from the High Court. We have a repossession order for this property. Are you that lady there? No. It's Romanian name, but I don't know. Does uh, she live here? No. What happened? The landlord has gone to court and has asked for the property back. So, in other words, you have to leave now. Now? You have one hour to get your personal belongings out and then you can make an arrangement with the landlord to come back and collect the rest. One hour? One hour, yeah. But it's, oh, it's winter outside. I'm sorry, I have no control over that. This shouldn't be a surprise to you because this has been going on for months. Who is this lady? According to this, she's actually the person who rents this property. Are there other people who live here? Yeah. How many other people? I don't know exactly. But we need to change the locks. Now? No. Only one second. Paul hasn't found the tenant listed on the writ, but the woman appears to be living at the property, and she's not alone. <laughs> Several other Romanian women are in the house. <laughs> Paul makes the most of the open door and steps over the threshold. That's the lock, Mr. Tiff. You can start changing these locks. 
Now Paul is inside, the property is officially repossessed and the locks can be changed. Who lives in this room? Me. The house doesn't seem to be a normal family home. All these seats. This is a waiting room. This is the waiting room, yeah. Fine, so this is a living room. Why would you have a towel hanging there and tissues on there? Red curtains, burning a bathrobe, walking out of a geezer fully clothed. Just make sure they're all packing. Phil heads upstairs. Hello. Just two, yeah? Three, yeah. And finds several other occupants in two of the bedrooms. The bedrooms are all set up the same. The residents will be women folk. And then you've got condoms, body lotions, and tissues and so on. Pretty clear signs that this is being run as a brothel. An unhappy customer. customer, yeah. Why are they taking the curtains off? Are they your curtains? Yeah. Those covers belong to the landlord. Leave the curtains. Please leave them there. This is my money. I don't care, just get out, please. All right, they say your curtain, now get out. Why? He's not been paid any rent to start with. That's the first problem. You've got a nerve on you. Don't, 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 don't. It was only after receiving complaints from the neighbours that the letting agent found out what the house was being used for. They've been telling me that there's stickers on the lampposts. People are then knocking on wrong doors and whatnot, saying, you know, I'm here for whatever. The letting agent is now threatened with a £20,000 fine from the council if he doesn't close the brothel down. <laughs> we don't want this happening in the first place, realistically. We just want it a nice family home. The eviction appears to be going to plan, but the women are in shock. I stay here, in the street, on front of this house, because I don't have another... nothing. As the deadline to leave approaches, Paul wants to get everyone out. Stand on the door. It's only out now. No more in. But unknown to the team, the woman on the phone has changed her mind about leaving. No one else goes in there. And she asks the other women to do the same. What's going on? What are you doing? The mood in the house changes. We'll call the police. No, you've got to go out. No more in. Now Paul and Phil suddenly have a situation on their hands. This eviction could spiral out of control. Now, after 10 minutes of deadlock, one of the women appears to be calling her minders. There's always a possibility people who control these girls might turn up and there could potentially be violence or certainly aggression. So it's always playing at the back of your mind. Paul isn't taking any risks and calls the police. We've just executed a high court eviction order here. It's pretty obvious it's been running as a brothel. They're all like getting clever now and refusing to leave. I don't want to put hands on them because of the implications. If somebody stages a sit-in, we will never use physical force until the police are in attendance. They're our responsibility up to the front door, and they're the police responsibility if a breach of the peace breaks out afterwards. Some of the women appear less committed to the sit-in than others. So. 
The woman who started the sit-in also leaves of her own accord. There's only one left in here now, when they just shut the door. But the woman who answered the door is still refusing to budge. She maintains that she's been paying rent. And if I understand why it is happened this... The police are coming. I give money from my pocket, and no. now I, I stay in the street. You say you've been paying the rent to somebody. They have not been paying it to the landlord. The person you gave the money to is not the owner of this property. She had no right to keep that money. She should have passed it on to the landlord. She's not been doing that. And this is not my fault. I understand that. It doesn't affect what we have to do. The landlord has the right to have his property back. The police are on their way here, and they will ask you to leave. You have my sympathy, but it doesn't alter the way we have to operate. The woman asks the others for advice. With their minders not far away, the women try again to get back into the house. Give the water, please. Oh, have problem the hard. No? OK. But I want to go to the toilet. Spune, spune. Oh. Grave, 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 grave. They appeal to Paul and the letting agent. One day. One hour, no. please. No. You come in my Wait, husband. one second. No. I've not received rent since May. Nobody pays single penny, OK? Now, you're talking about one day. What about me? One year waiting, no money. No, you're me leaving come, for free. Sorry, me come on here only two weeks. I understand that. But the people who you're giving the rent to, you need to speak to these people who give you the house. Effectively, to coin the legal term, they're on their arse in the street fighting to come back in. But if their people, their minders come back, then it will go off. The women wait for rescue. Here comes the cavalry. But fortunately, the police turn up before the minders. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not no, yeah. The yeah. occupants suddenly disappear except for one who still refuses to leave. This is the writ. These people, and it's obviously a brothel running here. Oh, it's a brothel, is it? It was, yeah. Uh, there were six girls working here. There was a customer here who uh, put his head up his arse and disappeared as fast as he possibly could. <laughs> if you just tell this girl out here that we are official, that yeah, the warrant we hold has been signed by a judge, she's got to go. Do you want to speak to me outside? The woman is finally out of the house. You're OK up there now. Well done. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Um, probably can stay here. The neighbours are going to be really pleased. Yeah. <laughs> Good to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. they already are. They started holding you, so congratulations. And, uh, so we can have a day on the side. I'm glad we could uh, achieve a result. Thank you very much. After a dramatic standoff, Paul and Phil have successfully completed the eviction. If you do try and break into the property afterwards, that's an offence that you will be arrested for, OK? OK. Over the past 12 months, we've attended to three or four evictions which have turned out to be brothels. But the fact that the girls were working girls didn't have any impact on me because, quite clearly, none of that's got any consequence to the result. Recent figures estimate that almost 20% of the adult population in the UK is in debt, with financial problems rising fastest amongst single parents and under 25-year-olds. Bridge End, South Wales. It's been raining in the valleys. It's 7.30 a.m. And High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are here to collect an outstanding debt of over £3,000 from defendant Kathleen Lee. We've been to this one before, Stuart. Yeah. Uh, no one was in. We left a letter 
Yep. Enforcement agents have tried to reach Kathleen three times over the last several months and failed to make contact. It says here no one was in at the time of call. Right. Left notes of attendance, hence the reason why we're going a bit earlier this morning. Right. The defendant owes the money to an ex-landlord who claims she left his property in disrepair. If Kathleen can't pay, the team have the right to seize goods to cover the debt. There might be a car in the drive, she must be able to get to work and school. No, that's a very good point. So what we'll do is we'll drive around the back first. Right, this is where we need to find out. Four. Yeah, go up there, six. No car there, mate. But Kathleen's parking bay is empty. Damn. The team drive around to the front of the house, hoping that Kathleen is in. Oh, we have an interior light on. That's always a good start. Try the doorbell. The light may be on, but no one is answering. Guarantee you, up, upstairs. Let's go around the back. Stuart finds the back gate unlocked. Hello? Stuart. Is there anyone in? I don't know. Hello, Kathleen? I call enforcement agents. Under the terms of the writ, the team have the right to make peaceful entry into the property. Hello? There doesn't seem to be anyone at home. Hello, Kathleen? I call enforcement agents. I mean, they might have just gone out to the shop or something. Well, come in, Vic. I need to go and do a security check. With no one answering, Stuart is concerned there may be something wrong. Hello, Kathleen. You got the case. Hello. He can hear movement upstairs. Hello. Hello. Then, as he approaches the top floor. Hello, Kathleen. Is that Kathleen? Kathleen, there's no need to worry. You need to understand I'm a, I'm a high court enforcement agent, okay? I'm not, I'm, we're not here to cause any stress. I'm the daughter, get out! Right, okay. We're not here to cause any harm or anything. We're just after Kathleen. Kathleen! Right, okay. Go on, Vic. We're not there to frighten anyone. We're there to do a job and with a child being alone inside a house can make the job a lot trickier. In fact, there are two children alone at home. One of them calls Kathleen to tell her that there are High Court enforcement agents at the house. It's a very tricky situation. We can't go back into the property now that we know there's a minor inside. As she's gone to work further, it might be that we might not be able to do anything further today. But at least we know she lives here. Mm. It's the right property. Well, we can wait. We can wait, yeah. Within 15 minutes, Kathleen is back at the house. Is, is it Kathleen, is it? Yeah. Kathleen. Oh. What can we do about this, Kathleen? We need some help. Well, what I'll do is stand back. The main priority now is speaking to your daughter. Kathleen goes inside to check on her children, leaving Stuart and Vic with a potentially valuable asset. Do HPI on the vehicle and see if it's free of finance. If the car isn't on finance, the team is entitled to seize it to offset the £3,000 debt. So Vic asks for a check on the vehicle. Can anyone do an HPI for me, please? Case reference is 3214. Thanks, mate. It's on finance. Oh, all right, Andy, thanks for that. <laughs> Cheers, bye-bye. How long? Two years left on it. Good, that's on finance. Good. So that would have been a bargaining chip. We can exempt that from the list. 
main course of action next is that we wait 15 minutes and then we'll just enter through the back gate and just knock on the door. Yeah. <sighs> but the plan isn't going to be as straightforward as Stuart and Vic think. She called the police. Now, after 40 minutes at the property, the team have to explain themselves to the officers. I caught Ritter control. There's no issues. That's not because they're disputing anything. No, no, yeah. It's just that, that they, the, one of the girls is very distressed. No, so, yeah. obviously, she's rung ma'am. We've... And then that's how we... We've, we've stood at the back door. We second we've heard somebody, we've come straight to the back door. Right, yeah. okay. And then we've left it as that. Right, that's fine. That's simple yeah. as that, really. and, uh, Yeah, yeah, well, we need to speak to her with regard in it, anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Stuart finally gets the chance to talk to Kathleen about the debt. He needs to collect payment today. You need to come to some sort of arrangement with regards to this. We have been here four times. You need to try and raise some funds. The, the, the money I've got in my bank, I've got £14. Hmm. And I've got, in the post office, £1,000. Hmm. Yeah. And I've got £1,000 in my bank that I haven't withdrawn, and that's it. Can I ask you something? Yes. Yeah. What can you afford monthly going forward? If you can give us something to work with, we're willing to work with you. Mm. Okay, based on the fact that probably you know that in your experience, if there's one debt, there's more. Mm. Um, I don't know, maybe £100? I don't think that's going to be accepted. It soon becomes clear to Stuart that Kathleen can't pay the money owed to her previous landlord. It is worrying that more and more single parents that we see are getting themselves into deeper, deeper debt. But the worst thing is they're not doing anything about it. As Kathleen isn't able to pay, Stuart and Vic have the right to seize goods. But due to her circumstances, they offer Kathleen a day's grace to find the money. You'd be amazed about what 24 hours can do. Instead of us bit being here and causing you under distress. Yeah, I would be amazed what 24 hours can do, but I've yeah. had weeks to do this and clearly I've not been yeah. able to get any money no. together. I have no family to ask. People assume that people have got mum and dad to ask. I've got that. Who am I supposed to ask? Is what is it that you do for a living, if you don't mind me I'm asking? I'm a social worker. If you're declared bankrupt, your employer would know about it, and I don't know if that would affect your employment or not. Well, there we are. <laughs> If Kathleen can't pay the full amount when Stuart and Vic return, her ex-landlord could force her into bankruptcy to reclaim the debt. We have informed her that the worst-case scenario would be a statutory demand on behalf of our clients. But people need to learn that bankruptcy isn't a joke. It's, it cripples you. I mean, that's why it's there. You have no bank account, you'll have access to no credit, you'll have no funds going into your accounts. It'll ruin your future with regards to applying for any job or anything like that. For the time being, the agents are forced to leave empty-handed. We've got the best result today, yeah. She's a single mom with three kids. I don't care who you are, it's never easy. But Stuart and Vic will be back in touch with Kathleen in 24 hours to see if she can pay. According to a leading property market survey, commercial rents are expected to rise at the fastest pace since 1998. 46% more respondents forecast higher rent rates going forward. Hayton, Liverpool. High Court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are back on the road to collect a debt from fast food takeaway owner, Mr. Soren Hassan. Another shop. Yeah, he's 3,039 pounds and 32 pence. He's not selling enough kebabs with sauce. No, he's not, is he? Mr. Hassan has fallen behind with rent payments on his premises. Oh, it's open as well. All right, let's get in that door. Stuart and Vic are looking for full payment today. There you go, Vic, straight in. All right, mate. Uh, yeah, commercial rent is. Yes. Yeah, we're after Mr. Soran Hassan. Soran Hassan is not in, but the man behind the counter quickly gets him on the phone. Is this Soran, is it? Hello, Mr. Hassan. I've been sent by your landlord uh, to, collect, to collect an outstanding balance of £3,039.32. 
sorry, sir, can you just repeat that? Sorry. Because I can't hear because of that's all. Hello? Hello, yeah. Okay, so you need to make a payment, sir. If not, we are instructed to take control of your goods today, unless you make me a payment now, in full. We're going to stop this now. You've got 30 minutes to make a payment to me in full. If not, I'm taking control of your goods, so by instruction of the clients. Oh, well, there you go, then. You didn't like the sound of that. Mr Hassan may have put an end to the call, but he rings his assistant back. Hello. Stuart thinks he's asked him to buy him some more time. What's he said? Now, we have a money. We know just at the moment the bank are in the cash. At the yeah. Bank. Anything to so for tomorrow morning? No. The main priority is getting those funds. With the clock ticking and the defendant trying to delay payment, Stuart and Vic apply some pressure. It's no time for the clipboard. If Mr. Hassan can't or won't pay the £3,000 in rent arrears, the team have the right to take away goods. But first, they need to know exactly what's in the shop. It's quite well stocked. You've got the kebab skewers, you've got the two deep fat fryers, you've got the prep table there, the fridge full of drinks, the twin freezers, a lot of decent equipment, to be completely honest. With the inventory done, almost an hour has passed, and there's still no sign of payment from Mr. Hassan. So the agents get the defendant back on the phone. Hello? 10 minutes. Yeah, but are you going to be 10 minutes? Because I've been hearing out 10 minutes for the last half an hour. Stuart isn't falling for any more excuses. Excuse me, mate. Can you start switching all the stuff off now? Can you do that now? How much do you want to pay? You, you've got to pay me now £3,039.32. Pardon? Cash or card is the same amount. There's no discount. Do you mate? Can you start switching the stuff off now? Switching your machines off now as we yeah, speak. No payments. So can you start switching the stuff off? Pardon? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right, I'll do it. No, listen. Why don't you pay over the phone now? And then we can stop this. Forget that conversation. Stuff needs to get switched off. So can you do that now? So I'll start doing that now. No, I do no problem. OK, go on then. Do you have a card there? Get the chip of the machine to it, please, mate. Yeah. Uh, I'll, is it a debit card? The second it starts getting switched off, the debit card comes out. Funny, that. But just as Stuart and Vic are about to collect payment, they lose contact with Saran Hassan. He's in a tunnel. Hello? Hello? But then a man walks into the shop. It's Soran, is it? No. I'm a friend of Soran's cousin. Right, OK. The defendant has called on a family friend who's prepared to pay the £3,000. Is it a debit card? Yeah. Well, you got a PIN number there, sir. Yeah, close that door. The family friend has brought back up. So it hasn't been authorised, so maybe there was a bit of data protection with regards to it. That's your copy. The payment is declined. But the man offers Stuart and Vic a solution. Pay your cash. Yeah. Cash? Do you want to get a receipt? Yeah. I'll do it. Do you want to meet the candidate or what? What shop I've got to go to the van. Shot needs to be open. Shot needs to remain open, mate. I've already said that. With so much cash on show, the man and his friends don't want to take any risks. I'm not dictating what's going on, OK? The shutter needs to remain open. Yeah, it, no, it needs to remain open, mate. I'll come behind the counter and I'll count the cash out, all right? I know there's kids and everything outside. I don't want to be counting cash. I understand that. But the men ignore Stuart and bring the shutter down. Yeah, it needs to remain open. I've already said to you three times. Bring it up halfway. No, yeah, bring it to there. No, bring it to there. No, I'm sorry, mate. It doesn't work like that. I can't. Yeah, I know, mate. But we're still in here. Yeah. Okay. You can't. Okay. What I'll do is I'll phone. Bring it up halfway. No. Okay, that's fine. I'll phone the police then. Phone the police. Yeah, I'll do that. No worries. Just bring it up halfway, and then I don't have to phone the police. Just bring it up. With the shutters down, Stuart and Vic are concerned for their safety. They need to collect the cash and leave before the situation escalates. 
That's 3,040. 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's 32. Eleanor, you see one of them, give me one of them, this one. This That's one, all I've got, You will get a breakdown in the okay. post. Mate, you're wasting my time now, honestly. I've been here for over an hour, my mm -hmm. friend. Debt collected. Vic is eager to go. Can you open the shutter, please, mate? You can do whatever you want. They've tried to trap you inside a building, make us feel uncomfortable, but we ain't leaving without payment. And walking out with a payment in full is the best feeling in the world. According to research from the UK's leading association of landlords, almost a third have experienced rent arrears in the last 12 months. One in five now worry their tenants will struggle with payments in the next year. Barnes, London. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Phil Short are back on the road to serve an eviction notice on Arnold Mabere and Janine Thiss. It's a standard writ of possession. Turn an eviction, eight thousand pounds on the rip. We want the next turn, and there, jumping with joy, is where the landlady is going to be. For the best part of a year, the defendants have only been making part payments towards the rent. Landlady Christine McLaren is owed over seven and a half thousand pounds. Hello. Hi, hey, are you, Paul? I am. Nice to meet you, Paul. Where's Hello. the house? It's down here, number twenty-five. Give you that. The drill is this. Mm -hmm. We prefer that you're not there for the first five minutes okay. till we actually get in and mm -hmm. they'll be given an hour to get packed and out. Mm -hmm. Shit or bust, no quarter given. The team aren't looking to collect the debt. They're here to get the tenants out. Red door. And with the writ in hand, Paul and Phil have the right to enter the property and change the locks. They are in because they've come and bolted the door. Will you open the door, please? We're not going to go away and we will break in if we have to. It's been a stressful time for landlady Christine. They went in on the 11th of July last year. They bounced the cheque for the deposit. Since then, I've been shaking and quaking nervously about whether I'm going to be able to survive financially. They know I left London to go and live in Cornwall because I've had cancer and I wanted to de-stress. No one is answering the door, but then Christine receives a phone call. Oh, it's him. Hello, Arnold. Hi, are you at home? We need to get in. I don't need to arrange it. It's the High Court enforcement that are here. You're leaving today. Yes, you are, darling. And let me put you on to the man, cos I'm going to get upset speaking to you. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm a High Court enforcement agent. I'm standing outside the door with a High Court writ to repossess this property. The writ authorises me to break in if I need to, and I will, if you don't open the door. The tenant says he's not at home. <clears throat> yeah. How old are the children? Your children, if they're that age, should not be left in the house on their own. I shall ring social services to take care of the children. I'm not going to be kept waiting. No, it's no long. I'm going to do it now. Thank you. Concerned about the children's safety, Paul wants to take immediate possession of the property. Paul, apparently I can get in from the back. The agents split up. It is a seven-foot door in a way. With children home alone, this eviction has taken an unexpected turn. Judicious use of the crowbars. Paul and Phil will have to act quickly. I'm looking for children. Now, Paul is on a mission to find the young occupants. Can you uh, open this door? Hang on, Phil.
He said the children were in here. Obviously not. Mr. Mabere clearly hasn't been telling Paul the truth. And he's back on the phone to Christine. So you said he just rang again? Yeah. Um, Asking if his children were OK. The children are not in there. They're not in there? No, they never were. Nine months after putting her home up for rent, Christine walks back into her property. A bit shaky, actually. <laughs> And it was a brand new kitchen when they came in. And that is disgusting. I had a really nice home before, and this is despicable, and it smells. I've got to turn this round really quickly, because they owe me so much money. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's, uh, it's dreadful. I haven't been able to work because of ill health, and this was my only source of income very nearly nine months. And they've not paid a complete month's rent in all of that time. Paul and Phil have been at the property for an hour, and there's still no sign of the tenant. I don't like to leave without seeing the person that we just evicted. I like to complete the loo, make sure he's got a copy of the writ. So Paul gives Mr. Mabere one last chance to attend the eviction. Hello. Yeah, OK, so we've repossessed the property. Your children are not inside and never were. And so if you want this, a copy of this writ, you must come here quite quickly because I have other work to do. OK, I'll be on my way. How long will you be? Uh, 25 minutes. Thank you very much. Bye. With the tenant's arrival imminent, Paul advises Christine to keep a low profile. Half an hour later, Mr. Mabere finally arrives at the house. OK. Yes, sir. It's always a relief if the tenant turns up, yes. because we can explain to them very forcefully what the effects of the writ are, and there are no loose ends left for the landlord to try and explain. The defendant immediately questions the legality of the High Court writ and produces a letter from the County Court. They won't. Well, that's what they said anyway. But it's fine, don't worry. They will sort it out. Because they say this is an illegal thing. Give it to me, I'll take it back to them. Of course, by all means. Thank you very much. I would say 70 to 80% are where the tenants are not necessarily taking the piss. That's probably a bit strong. But they've taken advantage of circumstances and they're just stretching it out to breaking point. I'm not going to be helpful to you unless you change your attitude. OK, that's fine. You, do I suggest you go to the court and turn it all upside down? Well, no, and that's then I'll fine. see you back here on Tuesday. No, that's fine. I just need to take a few emergency things. Faced with Paul's ultimatum, Mr. Mabere goes inside to collect a few essentials. Could you go in, Phil? Yes. Stay close. He can collect all his belongings in a few days' time. So you don't miss anything? Identification, medication, clothes and some toiletries. But the tenant's frustration over the eviction begins to show. There's a dispute as to who has possession of this property. Sir, there's no dispute, OK? Something else. In another court says something else. Sir. Yeah? Do not point at me like that. Calm down. Yeah? Do not right. point at me like that. Please and calm do not, down. Do not adopt an attitude with me either. I'm not any yeah? attitude with you. I'm calm. Just calm down. Just carry on talking. I'm not condescending. You are. Yeah. If it's to do with racism, you want to see a black person, this is exactly what... Sir, saying. this has got nothing to do with racism. I don't know how... That's, that is an outrageous anyone claim. Your, I've never seen anyone speak to your white person in the way you're speaking to me. I've never. I think people are stressed in circumstances like an eviction. All they're looking for is a weapon to throw back at us, be it a tirade, a choice of words, racism, whatever insults they can throw back, they do. And we just let it ride, because after a few minutes, it'll go away, and we'll just get down to the job in hand. A quarter of an hour later, and the tenant seems to be in no hurry to leave. Is there anything else you need to grab from the house, sir? We've been here too long now. Mr Mabere ignores Phil and locks himself in the downstairs bathroom. It's taking a long time. It's all right, my patience will run out shortly. I might have to kick this door down, 
Zozo, what are you doing in there? Nothing at all. Sounds like you're counting money. Sounds like you're counting money. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Money in the bathroom. Lot. Yeah. He hasn't paid the rent for what seven months. He's in the bathroom counting money. <sighs> Makes you sick, but you see it every day, and you kind of get desensitised to it. And well. It's been over two hours since the agents arrived at the property, and Paul has had enough. We're going to be out now in five minutes, please. I'll perhaps rephase that. You've got five minutes to leave. I just want to make sure I've got all my people. No, no, that's OK. But instead of leaving, the tenant heads back upstairs. If he doesn't go in the next five minutes, I'll physically eject him. But he's just been truculent, isn't he? Right, you need to leave now, sir. You've had more than enough time. And once you're dressed, sir, you're going to have to go. Your bag's already outside waiting. After three quarters of an hour at the property, Mr. Mabere finally leaves. Just ignore him. The important thing is you've got your property back now and you can relax. It's your house. Mm. It's the um, end of a chapter, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Next time, he's in the house. a mystery tenant gives Paul and Phil the runaround. What's he run away for? Kevin and Brian turn detective. It's no good, I need to see official documentation from them. And Steve acts fast in a challenging eviction. Whatever you do, do not leave the door open. Oh, yeah.